as mentioned by the Secretary, one of the uh, targets of the uh, plan is to maximize demographic dividend. And um, I would argue this afternoon that harvesting this demographic dividend fast is a necessary condition to increase this growth potential. But you might say, what is this demographic dividend? The idea behind population and development orthodoxy is what we call the demographic transition. So how would a country pass through this demographic transition? As countries move from large families, the high fertility rate, into small families, or the low fertility rate, they pass through what we call the Goldilocks period. Not too high, not too low level of fertility. This would last for 40 to 50 years that you have a stable growth of population. To measure it, basically this fertility, which is neither too high nor too low, is about 2.1 to 2.4 in the total fertility rate. And this fall to replacement fertility is a unique and precious opportunity for higher economic growth. That is the demographic dividend. So a country should first pass through a demographic transition before we can harvest the demographic dividend. As any dividend, you have, of course, investment. And here, the dividend comes into for two forms. The first one, the first dividend, would result from a demographic transition to higher per capita income due to higher productivity. This is the stage wherein investment is channeled more on productivity, okay? encouraging uh, production and investment, and thus creates higher level of income productivity. However, in the process of the demographic transition, there is another bonus, which is what we refer to as the second dividend. The second dividend is when individual in their working years accumulate savings to serve as buffer when they retire. Okay? So they would like to have the same level of consumption in their retirement years compared to their working years. So they are forced to save. And this savings actually creates a second kick for economic growth. When society increases its savings rate, this results in a more rapid economic growth, and this creates what we call the second demographic dividend. Our countries in, 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 in our uh, neighbors, neighboring countries, uh, experience this first and second demographic dividend. In fact, estimates have shown that the overall contribution of demographic dividend is about 35%, one-third of the average annual economic growth of ASEAN economies that went into a demographic transition and harvested this demographic dividend. Examples of these countries are Japan, South Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, and Thailand. Demographic transition will occur because people will eventually age, but the demographic dividend is not automatic. So you may have a demographic transition at the end, there's no dividend or minimum, very minimal dividend. So demographic dividend, while essential to economic growth, is not automatic. We're gonna just wait and harvest this dividend. We have to do something. And in this case, government plays a vital role to guarantee the creation of this demographic dividend. There are channels in which the demographic dividend can be harvested fast. There are two conditions for the demographic dividend to occur. One is lowering fertility rate. Lowering fertility rate is a necessary condition to the creation of a demographic dividend. No country that harvested demographic dividend, there's none in this world that did not reduce its fertility rate. So this is the key, not the sufficient condition, but the necessary condition for the creation of the demographic dividend. The second one is we have to increase employment rate to a higher level, particularly those 
age 15 to 24. These are the first who will transition from school to the labor. So they are the first group who will actually harvest this first demographic dividend. Currently, the youth, pop, the youth and employment rate is relatively high. And we cannot achieve this demographic dividend if the youth unemployment rate remains high. So this is a simulation that we perform on how much additional demographic dividend can the country generate okay, from 2010 to 2100. So we are, in fact, estimating in the longer years. We simulated it looking at what we call the support ratio. The support ratio is just a technical definition of the ratio between the effective workers, those who will actually uh, add to the demographic dividend through higher productivity and savings over the number of effective consumers. So you're just getting the, the ratio between the number of effective workers and the number of effective consumers. In the process of the demographic transition, this ratio would change because the age structure and the employment, unemployment levels would change. The typical cutoff of support ratio is 0.5. So support ratio 0.5 means that each worker on the average is supporting himself or herself together with another consumer. So that is the 0.5 support ratio. So the objective of creating this demographic dividend is to really increase the support ratio, increase it faster. You know? and maintain it a higher level. Now we have two scenarios here, the red line and the blue line. So the red line is what we have now. You know, if you're following the path historically, that is the support ratio would be highest at 0.48. And this will occur in 2080 to 2085. That is the estimated period wherein we have that support ratio. But of course, that's the reason why we're here. Okay? Chapter 13 of the PDP writes all the necessary ingredients to increase the support ratio. And the simulation is on the blue line. So the blue line, following the key points of chapter 13 of the PDP, would increase the support ratio to a higher level, thereby harvesting more of this demographic dividend. The support ratio will be greater than 0.5 starting 2025 and will be highest at 0.55 between 2055 and 2065. So this scenario creates a relatively much wider demographic window of opportunity. So you have a bigger demographic dividend under the strong reform scenario, the blue line, relative to the business as usual scenario, the red line. So to close, Demographic dividend is the key to increasing this growth potential. And as I've said, this is not automatic. We cannot just sit down and say later we have this demographic dividend. There is really that probability we're in demographic transition will pass us and the demographic dividend will be very, very small. Key policy reforms must be started to be implemented now if we are serious in harvesting this demographic dividend to increase our country's growth potential. So demographic transition and the demographic dividend kailangan para sa pagtuloy na pagunlad. Maraming salamat at magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, Dr. Dennis Mapa.